Saul Kruger, welcome. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have walked an incredibly long, some would say arduous journey with a, well, with a person before the band, a man by the name of Dricky Buerta. Otherwise, I think on his ID, it would probably say something like Friedrich. Yeah. But Dricky Buerta and his sister Linky and Bunty and Oliver formed a band yeah. and you can fill in the gaps here. I can't remember the exact year, but for two years, to all intents and purposes, the gathering kind of changed the face of what one would expect out of the northern parts of Pretoria at the height of apartheid, just for context. And you hooked up with this young guy, you were young too, and they formed a band. But you were friends with Drickey before the band was formed. So what I want from, from you is tell me, how did you meet him? How did you support him? And how did you become so integral in what was the gathering and later the outsiders? Um, I take you back to the year 1981. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I met drugs in August of 1981 by accident. Um, and in one sentence, it totally changed my life. Just meeting him. Um, he's like a brother to me. I uh, love him to bits. Um, we've known each other for so long. Um, but yeah, so we met up 1981, became friends, went to his house. Um, met his mom. He, yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> that's another conversation. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and from that very first day that I met him um, and he exposed me to new music. Um, it, yeah, it was it literally that emoji with the mind that's blown. Uh, that's what happened in 1981. Okay. Um, it was the right person at the right time. Um, we, I'll never forget that first day, he couldn't wait to, 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 to get my view mm -hmm. uh, on um, Ultravox. Yeah. And not just Vienna. The old, old the, the, the John Fox ultra the early stuff, yeah, yes, the proper stuff, some might argue, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and Spanel Ballet, mm. um, so yeah, so we, we, my sort of entry was the like the all the new romantic stuff, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the point is, um, that's when I met drugs, mm -hmm. um, and we became best of friends. And we've been best friends ever since. Um, Let's not count them. Let's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, I always years. have to. When you have to start doing maths and look at look at. It's more like forty years. It's more like forty yeah. years, right? It is. It is. It's a lifetime. It's. Yeah. It's. Yeah. It. I. It's. It's easy to measure now because all those albums that were sort of mind blowing. Mm. are now being re-released in box sets and you know very expensive um well we're not doing yeah. expensive but we're we're kind of guilty of the same thing right because if you fast forward a couple of years exactly you yes. were when you met him you were a teenager yeah right so you hung out you 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 shared this love for music and then Dricky forms a band and then you weirdly become the fifth member of that band and you've always been we're the yeah. uh, the fifth member or the fourth member depending yeah. on iteration of the band pump the brakes 
We have to backtrack a bit. Sorry. The band, the band was formed. A band was formed uh, in 1982, 83. Okay. Um, I was super keen. Um, everybody got like into instruments and yeah. And the thing is, you know, the problem with, with Drex is that he can just, he can do, make music on any instrument, which is really irritating. Um, he's just got that knack to do that. Um, so I have to admit right here in the, at the beginning of this little conversation that I am the world's, officially the world's worst drummer. Well, it's good that you know that. It's good that you know that. I, I am, I'm like super crap. So just stop. Anyway. Just stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I, I was in this band. I played the drums um menacingly bad um and then eventually as things came school came to an end the band sort of came to a conclusion um by that time we both knew where our paths were going i knew that i wanted to become a designer drugs knew that he wanted to be a musician when I told him that, love him to bits, but I am not going to be part of his, any part of his band. I will be on the fringes. Yeah. Doing design, doing whatever he needs. Yeah. I think he was really, really thankful for that. <laughs> because I think he was, he, he was, he was a little worried that I would, Want to pursue this? Uh, this, he, you know, he loved you so much. Mean, he would have given you no, that. No, no. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm I'm the guy that gets kicked out of the drumming circle at a yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it's just for fun. Now yeah. I'm really bad. But anyway, yeah. So um, so that pick another instrument. <laughs> just pick another oh, instrument. Yeah. No, just no. no. Yeah. Stick, no, stick can, to your knitting. I can, right? I, can yeah. I can listen to the music, but that's it. Um, no, so um, I even have a type here where I actually sing a song. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. We all anyway. sang a song. We were all put, put on stage. We were all made to sing Pale Blue Eyes. We, we know the drill, right? So. Uh, but anyway, so, so yeah, so the, there, was a, there was a natural progression where, you know, where as we discovered ourselves and we knew where our paths were leading in life um you know it's because we said we're such great friends it was just a natural progression of from going into and then when he became serious about the music you know that's when he um that's that's when we it sort of you know just clicked even better um yeah so so that's that's where it all started. It started with another band with all kinds of history, and then and then we um, then you know we 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 got into into the gathering. Into the gathering, yeah, and and so well, I think it's it's clear what your 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 motivation was. But if you have to look back at kind of um, well. We know how you got together. We know how you, well, maybe just unpack the contribution because as you say, your focus was around the creative component. So, yeah, but let, yeah, I think, you know, sorry, yeah, but when, you know, in those days, when you, when you want, when you start a band and, you know, it's all good and well, there are instruments and it's, you know, all of that basic stuff. But I'll never forget the very first gig um the gathering played was outside pretoria on some small holding and friends and family were in, invited and uh, yeah and i know that story well <laughs> yeah and um i my girlfriend at the time 
was actually was so irritated with me because there was no there was none of this none of the the, the glamour stuff because on that evening well early in that day already it was um hiring of smoke machines um and you know just to i i assume that sisters of mercy got their whole smoke machine vibe from seeing some of that footage from what we did because <laughs> that smoke machine it was like a, this old school thing it's like liquid and you have to pump yeah yeah. It and, yeah with the yeah with so the dry i had to so from that that whole day was just spent preparing and um stealing literally all my dad's um, extension leads and just to hook everything up and then when it was all there you know then i had to take the photographs and do the smoke machine and make sure sound was right and 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 so i was like just this i was like a super roadie you were um yeah <laughs> on, on top of creating all the visual yeah, but it was at the end of the day, it's those things that are just, you know, just so super cool to think back um, where things started and what you had to do. So, yeah, it was, um, you know, so I think there I kind of knew where my, my you know, the contribution is not just for a little bit of creative stuff. The contribution was, was, was much more vast than that. Um, it was a marriage it was weirdly you could call it yeah. in my mind it's a marriage because as you say as much as you were responsible for ultimately the identity um, or projecting and promoting the identity of what the gathering was you were throwing feathers you know from suspended above a live gig and you know <laughs> You did. You did whatever yeah. whatever was necessary on the night, and then when you were yeah. that, you were busy designing album sleeves and creating great visual elements. But you were you were kind of married to the band. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, but you know, and it 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 it. There was no, um, there was no preconceivedness about it. It was just a, a natural thing that happened because yeah, we were yeah. such great friends it was just you know this collaboration of friends that just carried on and on and on um yeah and that yeah you know at thunderdome throwing stuff from those the rose petals and oh man i yeah. was there i was there yeah. weirdly on the floor <laughs> sitting on the floor watching this gig not knowing who this band was and fast forward nearly 10 years that was when I first met Ricky, but it's, okay. but I think yeah, the, I mean I think your contribution is 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 understated, and I think by so many people not understood that as you say, it wasn't a question of um, you you had no scope of work, right? It wasn't like okay, well, mm -hmm. Sal will do that, Ricky will do that, Oliver will do that, yeah. Bunty does that. It was okay. What do we need to do? How many extension needs do we need to get? Yeah. Um, but the thing that still boggles my mind is that at the time that all of this was happening, never mind in the world, <clears throat> but that all of this was emanating, you know, again, from the northern parts of the most conservative city, you know, at the southern tip of Africa, that no one understood quite what it mm. was that you were doing. You and the band had a full understanding of, of your intentions but it was almost like he was speaking a foreign language. Um, very much. Very yeah. much. Oh, hell yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, you know, I think we, we were sort of prepared for that, you know, over the years at school and because mm. the, of the way, what music we listened to, the way we dressed, what we did, how we did it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always, you know, and and I do not want to sound cliched, but it's all it's almost like you know this this outsider, <laughs> if you know what I mean, Touché. kind of vibe. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and yeah, so it was it was not something that was 
really seen and heard and experienced in Pretoria at the time. Um, it, you know, or anywhere uh, in South Africa at the time, I think, and that was. Yeah, the I think we, you know, we we just had, <clears throat> um, we just had uh, big visual dreams. Um, apart from the music, you know, yeah. I'm I'm looking at it selfishly from from my point of view, but it, um, but yeah, it was um, exciting as it was. It was kind of, and once again, not. You know, it was groundbreaking because there wasn't anything like that. Yeah, but did um, but were you aware that it was that? Did you did you have any sense that what the gathering was doing, what you were doing in you know playing your part? That because as you say, none none of it was intentional. Well, it wasn't. There was intent, but you were just you were you were following your creative. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was just that we all, in our different ways, felt and knew that you know it it was just the right thing. It just felt right. Um, and and I'm I'm talking from a creative point of view. Um, even you know from music wise and and all the other stuff, but it. It just felt like it was the right thing to do. Um, it felt good. Um, we, I think we never, ever sat and thought, you know, we have to stand back for anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and inevitably you measure yourself against what's happening in the UK at the time. And, mm. But, you know, they are, they were in a totally different world. Yeah. Um, and, and things that were available to them. Exactly. And the lack of restriction that they had, you know, they had gone through, they'd gone through punk, mm. you know, so those barriers were broken. Mm. They just, at that time, that the first five years of the 80s was just like, Man, it, it was yeah. yeah. So 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 they had they had gone through the barrier. Yeah. We were trying without wanting to, but we were just we wanted to create something awesome in South Africa. It yeah, was well, something original because, but it's formed by, yes, the, the rest of the world. But I think you know, if you if I have to kind of sum it up, it's 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 weirdly it's it was as though you were you were trying to translate what was happening in the UK, what was happening even, you know, on the, on the East coast of America and saying, okay, well, how do you, because we were always very good at marrying what was happening in the U S and the UK, and then finding something weird in the middle. And yeah. if you think about so many of the bands that we were following at the time, so many of them in their latter years all went off to America, you know, and, yes you know, and, and are still based there today. But the point being is that you weren't looking to replicate, you weren't looking to, to um, well, copy what was happening. You, you were taking your own South African reality and then putting it into something that was not from here. And you created an identity that no one at the time, I think, yes, of course, we had the followers, but it was nobody quite understood but they why they loved it as much as they did and I, I suppose you know the same applies to you is that if I have to ask you what was it about it all that you loved you probably can't tell me but you just knew that you loved it you know yeah. that it felt fine you know yes but moving on to how does someone like you <clears throat> as a creative and as somebody who was looking to present what you heard and what you saw, and then to paint a picture of what you were hearing, what you were seeing, um, to be able to create a visual identity that was respectful of everything that you was, you know, everything that you were experiencing at the time. I think the the. The dilemma was that there, 
because we knew where to look, even at that time in South Africa, we were exposed to a lot of stuff that other people were not exposed to. And, and it was, I think, one of the big reasons was is that they just didn't know where to look and yeah. they didn't know, you know. Um, so the, the challenge was you have all of the stuff that you're exposed to at that time of your life. Yeah. And now you have to sort of filter out and you, you want to come up with your own yeah. ideas yeah. and yeah. your own stuff. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you know, and it, some stuff happened by accident. Um, you know, the talking about, you know, literally the painting, the painting that's, that's. Which, on, which just for context, sorry, if I may, is that, that painting, which is in the end, the album that we are currently looking to manufacture, that piece of artwork, which you created, obviously, um, yeah. well, uh, painted, um, sat in the band room. And I didn't realize that it goes back all of that time. I thought it was something that you had created more recently in response to what we were doing. Yet, that painting, and if we had to auction it at Sotheby's, it it could probably earn you a pretty fortune. That original artwork, which I'm taking is probably oil on canvas. Um, yeah. Um, still exists. Hopefully you still own it. Um, but that goes back it's, circa it's 1985. Hanging up, it's hanging in my house. Yeah. 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 Um, it's actually, it, it's actually dated um, 1987. 87. Um, Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and like I say, it was, it happened by, originally I painted something else on that piece of canvas okay. and it was just, it was just, you know, one of those things that you look at and it's, eh, it's just crap. Like you're drumming. <laughs> Worse. It was, you know, maybe I should, <laughs> it was just junk. So in, in fury, in artistic fury, I just, I just poured paint all over it. Yeah. And then <laughs> I, I'm going through a whole process here. I stuck a t-shirt. I literally put a t-shirt on the, on the wet paint mm -hmm. and I pulled it off. And then it's one of those weird things be, because, you know, the, the painting represents like this rib cage. Yes. That was translated into the logo of the band. Yes. And took the paint and I started pouring it and it, you know, one of those things that it just happened. It just ran. And it, yeah. there, it was all there and it was, ah, this is so cool. This looks, you know, mm. and yeah. And then eventually, you know, the you know, drugs loved it. And uh, so it hang, um, it hung in the band room and it was just sort of there, you know, and, and it, it has and all of the music, all of the rehearsals somewhere in the fabric of that candle. Yeah. That yes, yeah. Lit. I think with the right with the with the with the with the right seance and incantation, uh, yeah, we uh, yeah that the the canvas will hum. <laughs> so, um, dude, we could talk for days, and we won't. Yeah, no, no, they, because yeah. I think there may be another one of these sessions that we may do in the remaining ten weeks. Um, that we have left on our campaign, um, and I think it would be it would be foolish of us not to to do this again because I think you've only literally lifted the lid, and I want to know what's inside the can. Um, but thank you for regaling the tales that you have um, so far, and um, yeah, yeah. Let's let us get to our golden number, which is say 170 copies we've sold 30 odd already we've only been in, in our campaign for three weeks so i do think yeah we have love from all over the world which is um, amazing um yeah and yeah there's i think there's there there are future conversations to be had of stories that many of the people who will listen and watch this will cherish and enjoy and uh so thank you so much for taking the time to do this. That's a pleasure.